This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And today I want to talk about bed bugs. I want to talk about the differences in businesses and how pest control companies deal with the bed bug problem and why not all pest control companies can be painted with the same brush. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. So let's talk about bed bugs let's let's discuss uh the differences in pest control businesses practices licensing and all these things now i'm going to talk about getting rid of bed bugs too but i want to talk about why every i mean so i had a lady i'll just let me cut to the chase i had a woman come to me on youtube on one of my youtube videos and she posted a comment and she asked me to go over the differences in pest control companies. She wanted me to discuss why some businesses can get rid of bed bugs while other companies cannot. And so I want to approach that today and I want to talk about it and I want to try to address this problem that seems to be growing in the industry when it comes to not only bed bugs but termites and ants, cockroaches, silverfish, fleas, all kinds of bugs are, are causing pest control guys problems. And hopefully this will help you understand how to eliminate bed bugs on your own. And if you can't do it on your own and you need to hire a company, what to look for and how to pick your pest control company uh, so that you are effective in getting rid of your problem. Because let's face it, if it's your money, whether you're spending it to do it yourself or you're spending it for someone else to do it, you want to make sure it's well spent and that you're not wasting your money. So bed bugs, there's, there's a thing with bed bugs in the industry where there's a lot of misinformation. So bed bugs became a problem for me when I was 17. I was licensed in February. I had just turned 17 years old. Uh, December is when I was born. And so I had just turned 17 and I had gotten my pest control applicator license. And of course I went right straight to work uh, working a route in the spring of the following year. Um, I actually was approached during that summer by a customer. Actually, it's a restaurant that I used to service. I would get there first thing in the morning, really bright and early, and I would do the whole restaurant, and then I would come back later in the day to collect for, you know, payment. And the the woman that was the head waitress, she would always be the one to, to pay me, write my check. And so she'd come over and she'd say, hey, uh, Jason, I hate to say this, and, and I've never, you know, I didn't think this was a problem, but I think I have bed bugs in my house. Now, like I said, I was 17 years old. This was 23 years ago. She approached me, and she said she had bed bugs. I didn't know what she was talking about. And uh, even today, it's been 23 years, a lot of exterminators really don't know how to deal with a bed bug problem. I didn't know how to deal with a bed bug problem. And so the way that I approached the problem is I went went home, and I told my dad, I, put, I booked her out two weeks later, but I, I told my dad, I was like, Dad, this lady's got bed bug problems. And he's like, well, I don't know, Jason. I've never had to deal with them either. You need to go and do your research, find out how to kill them, and you, you'll just be the bed bug guy. And so I was like, okay, uh, I guess I can do that. And so I, um, I went to the library, and I researched for two straight weeks because we didn't have fast internet at home. We had dial-up internet, and, and it, well, there wasn't much of anything there that you could find that you needed. You couldn't just go to Google. You couldn't go to... Yahoo, I think Yahoo actually was around, Yahoo search engine, but you could, Bing wasn't around, Google wasn't around, uh, you had like Netscape Navigator and all these different ones, Prodigy and different programs, and so they just didn't have a really easy way to find information like they do today. And so I went to the library and I pulled out the World Book Encyclopedia, I pulled out all the different, Encyc uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, um, pulled every newspaper article I could find that was archived in the, in the library about how people dealt with bed bugs when bed bugs were a problem. And I learned about DDT and how why it was outlawed and 
which surprised, you know, actually if we had DDT today, we'd probably still have bed bugs because DDT stopped working on bed bugs, uh, which is one of the reasons they eliminated it from the market. But there were other reasons they outlawed DDT have nothing to do with bugs. But um, the point is, is that this is the way people dealt with the problem. I learned how people dealt with the problem and I approached it myself from the angle other exterminators were, were approaching it from. And I became pretty successful at getting rid of bed bugs. Now, that was the first bed bug job I had ever serviced. And then I had to go on several more over the next three or four years. And now it seems like I do one, at least one or two a week, sometimes more. Um, it just depends on the time of the year. You know, when people are traveling a lot, they go out of town, uh, usually you'll find it a month or two after that, people call you for bed bug services. It's March right now. And people that went out of town for in December for Christmas, a lot of those people call me now because usually it takes three to six months before you notice an infestation of bed bugs. And so typically March, April, usually pretty busy for me for bed bug problems. So what is the difference between one exterminator and another? So I have a lot of experience in pest control. I've grown up in this business. I'm second generation. Um, in the state of Virginia, when I got my license, uh, you had to have a year apprenticeship to get your license under pest control to work for a business. Now, uh, you only need a 40 hour work week. You basically work 40 hours as an apprentice under another company. You sit for your exam, you pass your exam, and then you can go right out in a truck and do general pest control. General pest control covers things like bed bugs, bed bugs, mice, uh, as long as you're not using restricted use pesticides and you're not using uh, termiticide, you can go out and you can do general pest control. Um, now, termite work and restricted use is still a year apprenticeship in Virginia, but uh, pest control, regular pest control, it's, uh, it's only 40 hours you need. Now, would you rather have somebody that has only a 40 hour work week, 40 hours of, of information on how to deal with bugs or would you want somebody that's been there for a year or two years or three years or 20 years you know the thing is is that experience matters and a lot of these big box companies the in the spring when pest control companies hire uh, because they advertise a lot you know you got these big companies they got all these trucks and cars and billboards and all kinds of stuff they pay for and that's very expensive, but it also pulls in customers. They get way more calls, call volume than I do. I'm just a one-man show. I mean, it's me and my son. Uh, we work together, and so we stay pretty busy, the two of us. But if I advertise to the magnitude they did, I would have to hire people too. I'd have to hire 20 or 30 guys just in the spring alone just to try to keep up with the call volume. And the fact that they only need 40 hours uh, and they can get their license, well, that's really good for me because then I could hire them on. And that's a lot of these companies do that. They'll do hiring in the spring. And so they have a lot of people that work for them that are just under-trained. They don't have enough training. And now Virginia is 40 hours, but there are other states in the union. That all you have to do is sit for your test. If you sit for your test and you pass it, then that's all you have to do. You can go out and you can work and you don't have to have any experience whatsoever. You just have to have passed your pesticide applicator test. Now, I think that's a little crazy, having someone in your house spraying pesticides all over the place, uh, or even just outside. Let's say you're just doing outside only. I mean, you don't know if he's going to poison somebody's pet, somebody's neighbor's pet, or uh, kill a targeted pest that is not supposed to be killed. Um, you know, baiting for mice and rats just, just haphazardly, not reading the labels, not following the directions, and just doing, I mean, what's the difference in that and you doing it yourself? You know, the thing is, it's, it's what you're paying for. And so when these bed bug exterminators come out, there are all kinds of different laws and rules and regulations around what type of pesticide can go where. Because the label is the law. It says it on every one of my videos. The label is the law. So if the label says that you can treat the mattress, then by all means, treat the mattress. But if the label says not to treat the mattress, then you can't treat the mattress. If the label says uh, don't treat contact surfaces, like if you're going to sit in a chair, you know, and you don't want to be in contact with the pesticide on your on your clothing or on your skin. Even if it's dry, it'll still say, don't spray in contact areas. Well, that means you have to pull the cushion up off of the couch, treat under the cushions. You're not allowed to treat where people put their butt. You know, you have to treat down in the cracks and the crevices, flip stuff upside down, treat it. A lot of exterminators don't pay attention to that, and they don't know what it means. And so, 
that's a problem. So if you, you hire a company to come out, let's say they have Crossfire. Now, uh, well, I told you I was going to tell you what I use. Crossfire is a pesticide that I use for bed bugs. It's what I've used for years. Everybody on my channel, anybody that's regular here, you know, you know me. I talk about Crossfire all the time. I, I really like it. It's worked really well for my company, and it's helped me deal with the bed bug epidemic that we've been dealing with. And so, I actually really enjoy it. I think it's a great chemical, and it's minimal work for the customer. You know, when you're doing a a bed bug job, a lot of times the customer is required to pull all the clothes uh, uh, out of the closets, out of the dresser, chest of drawers. They have to pull all the sheets, covers, comforters, pillows, everything like that off the bed. It's a lot of work. You have to laundry all your stuff. They tell you to seal it in bags and, and you know, all the crazy stuff. Go look. Some of these websites out there have the actual checklist on there, what they expect out of their customers. And it's such an extreme amount of work. With Crossfire, you really, it really does. If you read the label, it targets towards the beds. It really wants you to treat the mattresses, box springs, the headboard, footboard, the bed rails of the bed. Uh, they tell you to treat up, like even as far as the pictures that hang on the wall, if you want to treat those spots. And they, it's, it's, but it really is targeted to the furniture. It's really specific on treating the seams and treating in zippers and treating in all those different places of like sofas, cushions, pull them out and treat in the cushions, treat underneath the sofa, treat the legs of the sofa, all these different places they talk about. And they want you to treat those places because Crossfire is really a, it's a non-repellent pesticide. This means bed bugs don't see it. They don't know it's there. They don't know anything's been done. And when you sit on that chair or you sit on that sofa or you lay in the bed, you're laying with a pesticide residue right there. And if the bed bugs try to crawl to you, they will crawl through the chemical and die. It's very effective. They don't know anything's been done. So they're like sheep to the slaughter. They have no idea what's going on. They crawl through the chemical and it kills them. And it's very effective. It works really, really well. This is how Crossfire works. In fact, most pesticides on the market nowadays, like Tempered, Crossfire, uh, Apprehend, they all work on a non-repellency basis so that the bugs don't see the chemical. They don't know anything's been done. And this is this is why it's effective, because the bugs don't know that anything's been done to them. They don't realize it's there. And so they crawl out and they die. The reason I recommend Crossfire and not any other pesticides is because Crossfire works better. Uh, I've been on jobs where exterminators have used Tempered. Tempered is not very effective on Crossfire anymore. Bed bugs have pretty much developed an immunity to it. It just doesn't work. I mean, it does work on some houses, but it doesn't work enough for me to use it in my business. Problem is, is that if I go out to a house and I treat for bed bugs, I want the bed bugs to be dead today. I don't want people to have to call me back out there in a month or two to have to spray for something that I should have got rid of the first time. So I don't use Tempered. I don't use Apprehend either. Apprehend is a mold spore, and there have been instances of people that have had... Uh, actually had allergic reactions to this stuff so I don't really want it it's pretty new and so I kind of waiting but crossfire even crossfire itself I waited a long time before I bought it because it was very new and I didn't know how well it was gonna work or if it was gonna work at all so that's something I have to be really careful about in my business and so the reason that I recommend crossfire is because I use it in my own business um, any pesticide that I list on my Amazon page which I'll show you uh, in the link below there's a link to Amazon where I have all the pesticides and stuff that I use. All the links are there. I try to keep the list updated. By all means, if you see that anything that I talk about all my videos or in my streams, my live streams, which I do every Thursday night at 9.30 at night, um, if you ever see a chemical that I've listed that, that's not there, that's not available, Amazon is probably taking it down and I need to go find a new link. So let me know in the, in the uh, comments below if you can't find what I'm talking about in my videos because I want to know. I'll, I want to make sure you can find anything that you need when it pertains to pest control. So anyway, that's one of the differences in these companies. So a lot of it has to do with experience and just inability to understand the label and two, when you deal with corporations, a lot of times you don't have anybody that really thinks outside the box. They hire people, they expect the yes men to do what they tell them to do, even if it doesn't work. A lot of these bigger name brand companies use heat treatments. And I'm, if you watch me more than 15 minutes, you know I hate heat treatments. I talk about it in almost every video, every live stream I do. I talk about heat and why heat is not effective 
and I try to explain it in the lamest terms, the most easiest way to understand it and why it doesn't work. And a lot of these bigger companies, that's just what they do. They've invested all this money in these machines and these very expensive pieces of machinery to kill bed bugs. And it's not effective, but they're still doing it. I mean, it's effective some. All right, so the way that I warrant whether or not I am going to do a specific type of treatment is I look at the success rate. I look at how successful other exterminators have been using this method or that method. Um, and because I like to be 100%. Now, 100% isn't possible. It's not possible for any business, no matter how good the exterminator is. But I'm pretty close. I'm about 97, 98% effective. I'm uh, meaning with just one treatment. Most of the treatments I do, I eliminate the bed bug problem with the first treatment. Um, not every time. It doesn't happen every time but it does happen most of the time. And that's by using Crossfire. Now, these heat treatments, I mean, they'll claim these high percentage of success, but from what I've noticed from my own research is it's probably about 70 to 79% effective. It's not that effective. And when you're getting up into 90 to 100% success, that, why would you use anything else? And you save your customer money. The thing is, a heat treatment is very expensive expensive. You spend a lot of money to have a heat treatment done to your house and the power bills and the propane and all the stuff. And it's just, it's a lot. And you got to have a guy out there all day long because they got to do it. And anybody that tells you they can't do a heat treatment in less than eight hours, if they, it takes eight hours to do one. You got to have somebody sit out there all the time and watch the heat machines and make sure that everything's being done right and that all the heat is staying constant. And, you know, it's a lot to doing a heat treatment crossfire. I go in there, I treat the mattress, I treat the box spring, I treat the, all the furniture in the house, and then I leave. I mean, I treat the baseboards, crown molding, and around windows and stuff too, but I've got lots of videos showing exactly how to do a bed bug job, and, and then I'm gone. You know, 45 minutes, hour and a half, maybe, tops, with me and Rory both working together. He usually goes ahead of me and gets the furniture ready. I go behind him, start treating everything. We put it all back together, and we're gone. And the customer only has to be gone for a couple hours rather than all day long while they're trying to do a heat treatment. So it's more, it's, 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 it's better for the customer. They're not having to do as much prep work. They're not having to do as much, really much of anything except removing everything from the bed, which you do that every so often anyway to wash your sheets. So it's, it's a lot easier on the customer. It's not something you wouldn't already be doing. And so, uh, and that's, and that's the thing when you deal with these bigger corporations, you don't have people that they just do it whatever the corporate office has told them to do and they have to do it that way and that's just what they're expected and they don't get another option. The corporate office may have bought in bulk, tempered, and that's just all they get to use. They can't use Crossfire. They can't make a decision and say, well, this tempered is not working for my branch. I need to use Crossfire. No, they use what they're told to use because that's the corporate decision. It's like McDonald's coming in and telling these little chains, even though they are, uh, you know, they're franchises, you still, Big Mac has to be made like a Big Mac. A uh, fish fillet sandwich has to be made like a fish fillet sandwich. You know, you can't just serve popcorn at a McDonald's because that's not what McDonald's sells. You're not allowed to do that. They're a franchise. They have to follow certain franchise rules. And a lot of your exterminating companies are broken up into franchises and they have to do what corporate tells them or they don't get to keep the franchise. So hopefully I have explained the difference in pest control companies. We're not all the same. I hear this a lot in my business. I get calls, people call up and they're price checking and that's completely understandable. I always tell people to check your prices too. But people will tell you, they'll say, well, you're expensive. You cost a lot. You're a lot more expensive than so and so, and it's only like six or seven dollars more. But uh, the typically, typically, when you find out what they're actually comparing you to, it's really not that big a difference in the price. And so they'll they'll say things like, "Well, uh, you're so much more expensive," or "You're a lot cheaper." I actually had a lady one time that almost didn't hire me for bed bugs. I mean, I was ready to do the job. I would have let her hire somebody else. It wasn't that big of a concern to me. But I told her, I said, well, why, why was it that you didn't want to hire me? And she said, 
because you're a third cheaper than everyone else. She's like, I don't think you're going to do the job. Well, I'm like, well, you can give me a raise if you want and pay me the same thing everybody else does, but I don't think I need to charge you that much. I don't think it's ethical. And that's the thing. You get ethics when you deal with more of a local company. You get uh, someone that's more experienced, someone that is feeding their family, and they're worried about you know putting food on the table because one bad word against you it's it's hurtful to a, a single business, you know, single man operation like mine. And so, anyway, I hope you understand the differences between corporations, companies, when dealing with bed bugs and why some businesses just do not get rid of the problem and others are more successful. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. Sorry I've rambled on for so long, but don't forget to come around every live stream Thursday nights and let me talk to you there. Call me up on the phone. We'll talk about it. I've got a Skype number that I use specifically for my live streams, and I look forward to seeing you. It's one of the highlights of my week, being able to sit down at my desk and talk to you about bugs. So if you have any questions that I have not answered tonight or today, whatever time, wherever you are, then be sure to stop by every Thursday night and ask me. I love to talk to you or ask in the comments below. If you're not, if you don't have the ability to come and meet me up on live streams, then comment below. I read every single comment. Now, you may not see your comment right away when you post a comment, but trust me, I read and approve every single comment that comes through my video channel. I look forward to hearing you and I look forward to helping you. Y'all have a great day. Uh, remember, Crossfire, it's also in the link in, in the description below. Take a look at that. Look at some of my other videos on my channel and see if it's right for you or if you might need to hire a company. But ask questions. You need to ask questions of every single person that you hire. Make sure they know their stuff. Y'all have a good one. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.